And what I want to point out here is that we have a misconception in our present mindset because of the fact that primarily most of our food is factory farm food. When you talk about vegetarianism in contrast to meat eating, in a society where very little of what you're eating, be it vegetable or be it an animal product, is coming from anything other than factory farming. In other words, when upwards of 90%, 98% of what we're eating is factory farmed or is industrial organic, right? Not necessarily local, not necessarily pasture. When we're talking about that world, it definitely makes more ecological sense to eat lower on the food chain and to not support factory farmed animals because of the unethical, unhygienic, unnutritious, various other lists could go on and on problems with it. But when we're talking about comparing eating an animal product from an animal that forages on things that humans cannot eat, this is a very different formula. So, because when we're talking about comparing being a vegetarian to eating animal products, and we're assuming that all those animal products could have been created by those animals eating stuff that we could eat, then it becomes a viable argument. Yeah, we should eat lower on the food chain and be vegetarians in terms of supporting something that doesn't even make energetic sense, much less ethical sense, right? So we don't want to support factory farming for many reasons. But what I'm pointing at is I'm saying that some of the scientific underpinning that's been given for why vegetarianism is the notion that we're making use of food that could be fed to animals. If we eat it instead of feeding it to animals, you get a better energy return because your energy loss is upwards of 10 to 30 to 1. So you're feeding like 30 pounds of grain to a cow to get like one pound of meat. Then don't feed grain to the cow, but all factory farm cows are fed grain. So, if, so it's a viable formula when we're talking about animal products that come from factory farming, vegetable products that come from large-scale mechanized ag. Where that argument falls through the floor is when we talk about how about animals that are eating things like what the Scottish Highlander cattle can eat, which is going to be goldenrod and plantain and all kinds of gnarly plants that you wouldn't even ever imagine your cow would chow down on. <laughs> so, now, you know, so now we're talking about an animal that's out there eating stuff that you can't get any nutritional value from, and now you can melt that animal. And now you've got milk. So you've got milk from an animal that made use of something that you couldn't get anything out of. This is why we're so keen on the notion that really, and I don't want to be, I don't want to be, um, I don't want to sound like this is, this is an ideal, but it is real in that permaculture designs can't really happen without animals. I can give you a lot of suggestions of how to do them that are purely plant-based that are vegan friendly, but you need to be aware that the reality of the recommendation of permaculture is that animals are part of your design. Now you could see your primary animal as human when you're talking about urban landscapes. I would say our main animal that we need to deal with in the urban environment is the human animal. And because we don't look at human beings as animals in the urban environment, we're not dealing with the nutrient loads that are generated by human beings in urban environments to create fertility. We need to start dealing with human or in cities as a way to create soil building, because we're the biggest animal in that environment. So I'm not talking about urban environments. I'm not saying you have to bring in cows into the city. I would say you'd be better off bringing fish and bringing chickens and bringing ducks into the city than you would be if you didn't bring in any fish or any chickens or any ducks. Because those animals do an incredible amount of work for you in your garden system, and a great deal of that work has to do with nutrient cycling and the capacity to build soils relatively rapidly. 